Hello, I am Dr. Alexandre Amato, a vascular surgeon at the Amato Institute, and today I will talk about how to identify lipedema and the role of the vascular surgeon in this disease. Lipedema is the deposition of fat in the legs, a condition that occurs more frequently in women, almost exclusively, and comes with pain, sensitivity to touch, and bruising on the legs. It is usually symmetrical, so the amount of fat in one leg is equal to the other, with no significant asymmetry, often confused with obesity or lymphedema, but it is a separate disease. After all, obesity does not cause pain, and lymphedema should not hurt unless it is infected. It is a chronic and progressive disease, as long as uh, there is persistent inflammation. So it's very important to treat the inflammation adjacent to lipedema. There's no point in removing the fat if you don't treat the cause. The fat is simply our body's response to inflammation. It is a layer, it is a way for the body to defend itself. The fat from lipedema is already described as a protective factor against cardiovascular risk. So, you might have a feeling of, ah, I don't like the aesthetic look of the fat on my legs, but you have to understand the other side, that fat on your legs, if you didn't have that fat on your legs, you would be suffering all the inflammatory damage in your body. So the most common symptoms are sensitivity to touch, touching the legs. Lipedema can occur in the upper limbs, lower limbs too, but when you touch the leg, it doesn't create that indentation. It might turn white, but it doesn't create the indentation. Sometimes it can be a little, but not too much. But there's increased sensitivity, there's pain, a feeling of heaviness, tired legs. Often there's fatigue throughout the whole body. This is a good example of a metabolic problem that involves the entire body, not just despite seeing the legs. And the feeling of swelling, often described as, oh, I retain fluid. This fluid retention, described by women, is often not the fluid itself, but the inflammation acting there in that fat. Often women find that certain foods like, oh, I ate this and noticed my legs got worse. So have you noticed any food like that? Write it down in the comments, I want to know. Differentiating lipedema from obesity, in obesity, the fat is distributed all over the body and visceral fat is the fat related to inflammation and cardiovascular risk. Visceral fat is the one inside the abdomen, not even in the abdominal wall, it's inside. It's with the organs and often it overflows and when there's no more space in the visceral fat, it can even lead to fatty liver, depositing in other organs in different ways. Now the crucial difference between obesity and lipedema is that obesity doesn't hurt. Period, it's not supposed to hurt. But some lipedemas also don't have pain. So a lipedema that doesn't hurt is not so easy to differentiate from obesity. Then we have to look at visceral fat. We have to look at other symptoms. Many times there are other inflammatory symptoms but not the characteristic pain. The difference between lipedema and lymphedema is that lymphedema most of the time is unilateral, it occurs in just one leg. So there's a big difference from one side to the other. Lymphedema also most of the time is acquired. In other words, it happens secondary to some other disease, some other event that could have been a trauma, you hit your leg and ended up with lymphedema or had an infection and then had lymphedema in that limb due to damage to the lymphatic system. There is even congenital lymphedema, but it is much rarer. And since lipedema is chronic and how progressive people who see that image of the stages of lipedema often look at the final stage, stage four, which is the association of lymphedema with lipedema, and they panic, right? Oh my, I'm in the initial stage, but if I don't do anything, I'll reach stage four. For heaven's sake, remove this fat from my body to cure it. I don't want to have this problem anymore. Far from it, what it means is that those in stage four were at some point in the initial stages and had a progression. But what it only progresses if you don't do conservative treatment. It only progresses if you persist in inflammation daily. It's very common for people in a super early stage but with a lot of inflammatory symptoms. So there's a lot of pain, a lot of swelling sensation, 
these are the women who people around them don't see what she's talking about, right? She says, damn, I have this pain, I have heaviness, it's bothering me, my leg looks ugly, and often people don't see anything, they don't even see the ugliness she mentions. This is a dissociation between what she feels and what people see. This is not body dysmorphia because the symptom is real. We feel this inflammation and our brain gathers all this information and delivers it to us the way we see our body. But since lipedema is a disease that isn't taught in medical schools, not all doctors are used to diagnosing and treating it often. These women have seen many doctors already and no one made the diagnosis. And because no one made the diagnosis, it ends up being overlooked. Gosh, I went to so many vascular specialists. I only talked about varicose veins. How come no one mentioned lipedema before? They didn't mention it because it wasn't taught in medical school. Only those who had extra curiosity and went to study something that ooh, wasn't part of the uh, curriculum study lipedema. So self-diagnosis is still very common today. So to self-diagnose, you might end up researching on Google, social media, and you see an image of a leg that looks like yours, you identify with it, and then you see a new term. You see this term lipedema and start studying about it. My suggestion is to read from reliable sources. So the Brazilian Lipedema Association, which is the only non-profit association in Brazil, is on the website www.lipedema.org.br. There you will find reliable information about lipedema. Most of the other sources that will appear for you will try to push some treatment, some product, something. And once you start studying about lipedema, you will be bombarded, impacted uh, by the topic in various ways. But to do a self-assessment, there is a standardized questionnaire that I am proud to say we created and published, and it is being used worldwide. It cannot give a diagnosis, but it can indicate the probability of you having lipedema. And this probability is calculated in a scientifically studied and proven way. I will put the link below in case you want to take the test. But if you know someone who has complaints uh, about their legs, someone you know, a friend, a family member, you can take this link and send it to them to answer. It might be very valuable for them to open a range of knowledge. So when seeking medical help, when looking for a lipedema specialist, after all, who is the lipedema specialist? The lipedema specialist is the doctor who studied the subject. There is no specialization recognized by the CRM, medical, uh, for lipedema. But those people who dedicate themselves most to the subject. So I am a specialist in lipedema. I research lipedema. I publish scientific articles on lipedema. I change and direct global research with serious publications on the subject. I work as a vascular surgeon. However, being a vascular surgeon is not a prerequisite to commit yourself to lipedema. There are numerous individuals intrigued by this topic, either studying it due to personal connections or experiencing it themselves. It is essential to consult a specialist when uncertainties surface, as they may signify discomforts such as pain, heaviness, fatigue, swelling, or a sense of fluid retention in the legs. Any fat deposition in the legs can also be uh, the initial push for you now to consult a lipedema specialist. I consider a vascular surgeon the most comprehensive specialty to deal with lipedema. And okay, I am a vascular surgeon. I might be a little biased there in answering this question, but I see the vascular surgeon as that doctor who does a lot of surgery, has a lot of clinical care, considering angiology, which is the office work we do. A vascular surgeon also deals a lot with aesthetics, with treating varicose veins. A vascular surgeon is also responsible for treating swelling. A vascular surgeon deals with legs all day long. I see them as the most complete doctor to offer all treatments for those with lipedema. For example, if you look at 
someone who has a tool just to treat lipedema, they will try to do everything to make seeing that treatment work for everyone, even though it might not. For example, the plastic surgeon does surgery for lipedema, so okay, for all patients he will have to offer the surgery because he won't have another tool to offer. But surgery, it's not suitable for everyone. In fact, surgery shouldn't even be the first treatment attempt. Surgery is the cherry on top. After all, removing the fat, you're just removing the target of the inflammation. The problem is the inflammation, not the fat. The fat is a consequence of the initial problem and the diagnostic process. It is done with the anamnesis, which is the conversation, which is to understand the patient's symptoms and the physical exam, which is the moment when the doctor will palpate the fat, will try to understand how much swelling it is causing in the area, will evaluate the swelling, will evaluate how much it sinks when you press with a finger, how inflamed the legs are. So when you go to the vascular surgeon to evaluate the leg, he is not looking at the leg. There are even some patients who are embarrassed to show their legs. They don't show their legs at all, don't wear shorts, don't go to the beach. No one in the family can see their legs. These people are afraid to show their legs because of the aesthetic issue. But during the physical exam, the vascular surgeon is not concerned with aesthetics. He is looking for the signs. These signs that indicate the presence of some disease. This sign could be an inflammatory sign. There is a redness there. There is a pain upon palpation. There is swelling that causes depression or not when pressed. In the movement, there's a crepitation or not. All of this is very important to assess. Not just lipedema, but all the associated comorbidities. Because it comes along with chondromalacia, it comes along anxiety, stress, often there's ADHD associated. And all of this greatly influences the symptoms that the patient is experiencing at the moment. That said, I must emphasize that the vascular surgeon is there to help you if the vascular surgeon you visit doesn't know about lipedema, don't get mad at them. They didn't cover this topic in medical school. It's very important then to broaden the scope to share this information. You can guide this doctor to quality information. You can leave an institutional brochure. So the Brazilian Lipedema Association has brochures for distribution which don't advertise anything or anyone. They just inform about the existence of lipedema. Uh, you can leave a scientific article. You can open the mind to a completely new field that often they weren't aware of. Did you like our video? Subscribe to our channel, click the bell to receive notifications of new videos. We are posting here almost daily. Videos for you and your family. Grab the link up there, send this video to that friend you think might have lipedema. Take this link and send it to your doctor who you think needs to study a bit about lipedema. But don't do nothing. Do your part because the world depends on you. And stay tuned, I'll put up the next best video for you to watch.